back. I'm Gary Parr, and you are listening to Fiber Talk, the twice weekly podcast for the needlework artists. And our artist this week from the Royal School of Needlework, Chief Executive Susan K. Williams. Hi, Susan. Hi, Gary. Nice to be with you. Thanks for joining us. And the future tutors course leader, Kelly Aldridge. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Gary. Nice to be here. Uh, thank you. And uh, this show, uh, sponsored by Sassy Jack Stitchery, sassyjackstitchery.com. As we say many times there, be sure and check out uh, Kim has the Royal Garden Project that Yvonne and I are starting on July 5. So you get your kits from uh, Kim, uh, 15% off on that. And uh, be sure and, and check out Kim's Learning Stitches program. She is getting that wound up. Uh, pretty good right now with lots of videos and the book that supports that is excellent and uh, so if you want to learn some new stitches and expand your horizons a little bit be sure and check out that that uh, program that Kim has to offer you can join anytime and uh, catch up on the videos and that's uh, that's excellent And of course free shipping for uh, people in the states uh, till Kim is able to open the store and Shipping is a flat rate. International shipping is a flat rate of $15. Check that all out at sassyjackstitchery.com. And thanks to Kim for sponsoring the show. All right, you ladies have been through what just about every school in the world has been through, and that is converting from classroom to online overnight. This is, must have been a real entertaining program for you. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And for our tutors as well. Um, there was no kind of preliminary preparation for it. Uh, we just had to up sticks and go. Uh, and um, we told our students on the 17th of March, that's it, last day of teaching, take everything you need home with you, um, and then we'll pick it up again on Monday online. Um, and that's what we've been doing ever since. Now, you, you guys ha had a bit of a leg up in that you have really kind of been increasing and in and uh, maintaining your online programs. But still, this is a, a very different thing for uh, classroom people who are used to be being face-to-face -face and hovering over the shoulders and, and all those things. What uh, uh, Did we have to put in some extra training with your, your classroom people? It's been a lot of learning on the job because there wasn't really time to, yeah. um, to, to take time out and, and look how we're going to do this. So, in fact, Kelly will be able to tell you a bit more in a moment, but um, our future tutors have really become our, um, our, our training forum. Um, so they are learning on the job, both the technology and the stitch. And then uh, alongside that, our tutors, and we're, we're working on it. And every session we have, we see what we've learned and then how we can do it better. Um, but Kelly will tell you more about what they've been actually doing on the Future Tutor course. Yeah, we found, Gary, that the traditional way of doing online uh, learning, online teaching, certainly as far as the RSN is concerned, has been sort of pre-recorded distance learning uh, packages that uh, are the same regardless of who is is viewing them. So they're not interactive, although they're very popular and they're very effective. But uh, we're actually trying to recreate the live classroom situation. Um, and <laughs> yeah, there's the challenge, right? <laughs> well, yes, it is. But I, I think we're well placed in as much as uh, we certainly we started this term face to face. So all of the techniques started face to face. And so they were able to finish those remotely at the end of last term. So 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 they kind of had a soft landing into the 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 online experience. So when they picked up in this term, the tutors had already had a go at uh, teaching and interacting with everybody at a distance. And I think the thing that, that has come across very, very strongly is A, our tutors are game for anything and, <laughs> and are quite willing to have a go. B, the, there's technology out there off the shelf that is incredibly helpful. And C, 
no one platform is is the the full answer. So so we have a, a combination of Zoom. I'm sure you've heard of that. Yes. Um, they have they have Zoom lessons, but they also have uh, WhatsApp groups so that that are specific to that particular class and and year group and the, the two together combine uh to be able to uh, give them almost the 100 percent experience you know i'd say that they're probably I, I just had tutorials with them all uh over the past couple of days just checking in with them making sure that they they've got what they need and and they're all doing remarkably well and they're all saying you know it's it's not that bad it's actually pretty good and most of the time we can we can get the feedback and the instruction that we need so i'm really proud of all of them you caught a real break in that the foundation it sounds like had been laid lane laid mm -hmm. whatever uh mm -hmm. face to face <laughs> So, yeah. so you you at least had a, a launching pad for online in place. Yes, we did, and I think that the 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 gen the new well the new current generation of students certainly uh, on the future tutor program they're they're very comfortable with instantly WhatsApping each other because you can do that to groups as opposed to individuals um, and sharing thoughts and uh, photographs and uh, occasionally a quiz. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so they're very, very au fait with, with the uh, technology and in some cases were more ahead of the game than our tutors were, but our tutors have caught up very quickly. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's interesting that WhatsApp comes up. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's, uh, I don't think, hardly used at all here in the States. But uh, mm -hmm. I had a, a conference, oh, a year and a half ago, that uh, involved a good number of people from Korea and China. And mm -hmm. was sitting at a dinner table with them. And uh, they were WhatsApping themselves all over the place, uh, even across the table. And mm -hmm. I, I started asking about that. And, and they said, oh, and, and they immediately had me setting up an account and getting in a group and all that thing. Because that is, outside of the States, that's a, a primary communication tool. I was going to say, it really is, because the kind of things that we have used it for before we um, went into lockdown, um, we actually had a visit the end of last year from the uh, Queen of Malaysia. As you know, we are, we are normally based at Hampton Court Palace, but those old palace walls are quite thick. Yes. And um, general general texting doesn't get through very easily but we could set up a whatsapp group and on the day we were using that to communicate because she was going to go to different parts of the palace we were taking her around we needed to have people in the right places at the right time that was the quickest and easiest way to do it for everyone to be part of it um, rather than standard email or text that's an amazing uh, piece of software that really uh, I, I was I was impressed with it. Now, of course, I get back, uh, got away from that group and quit using it because I just don't uh, here in the States. There's just no need for it. But um, so that's a, that's a real benefit. That's a nice tool to have in your in your pocket. And uh, uh, Kelly, then the, the what adjustments have the have the tutors have had to make? I mean, has it been fairly seamless or have they because I mean, they're used to that interaction and seeing immediately uh, what's going on on the on the ground cloth, and uh, now what we have do we do it uh, a live exchange? Hold things in front of a camera? Are people mailing things in? How's that working? Well, it's uh, a combination of the two. So uh, that is one of the bits of feedback that uh, we've had from a couple of the students is that currently how they're doing it is they are they are actually watching the tutor demonstrate on screen. So it's really it's the technical side of things. So yeah. at the moment we we've got some tutors who are very comfortable with using Zoom technology and will be able to have more than one camera linked to their account and they can swap between uh cameras so so if they're talking to the students they can have the camera 
one of the cameras on themselves and then when they swap to the other camera it might be an, a you know a smartphone that is on a tripod directly over top of their uh, embroidery frame and they are then um, showing what the the technique is to the students now with the students uh, they currently we have not got them with with two cameras uh, because the only way that they could do it is actually to be invited to the session twice and yeah. have themselves as one attendee and their embroidery frame as another. And it gets very complicated. It, it, it puts pressure on the bandwidth. So um, we're, we're, we're looking at the possibility. I've suggested that perhaps uh, at the beginning of a class, they all are, are uh, facing their camera, but that actually as lovely as they all are to look at, they might want to then <laughs> choose to turn their camera because the, 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 the teacher knows what they look like and really needs to be watching what they're stitching. Right. Um, so, so, and, and it's a, it's a matter of sorting out some extra tripods um, and boom arms uh, for, for some of the students. So we're still playing around with it and, and finding out what these, uh, the, these different platforms can do. It's like somebody said to me, it's like, building a plane in the air mm -hmm. um and, and so we're, we're we're learning and doing and and failing and changing as we go at the moment <laughs> yeah that's a good that's a good analogy building a plane <laughs> in the air yeah mm -hmm. yeah because i think everybody is going through that that is doing any kind of education um i know that uh, uh we we were ramping up our live shows and uh uh for us, it's not been, uh, from the podcast end, it's really not been that much of a change. But what has been a benefit for me is there's so many people trying things that I've really been monitoring uh, the, the different groups because I'm learning things that we can we can apply, different techniques, and, and people are, are – because they're trying to solve problems and they're trying to do it quickly. And uh, it sounds like you're going through that same process of uh, this, this kind of works, but – Boy, this looks like this over here would be a real good solution, and I'm sure you'll you'll sort it out. And in the next few months, you'll probably stabilize and and have a pretty good program in place. I think you're absolutely right on that, uh, Gary. We're we're uh, really um, learning as much as we can from from each interaction um, between students and tutors. Um, so much so that we've actually already launched our first um, online class in the UK, um, which is you know, a one day short course class, which is happening tomorrow. And then um, we got a lot of outcry, in fact, from people in the States going, oh no, I'd really like to do that. And so um, on the 11th of June, we are um, offering it to uh, Americans because it will be running um, 10 to four um, Eastern time. Mm -hmm. um, so we will we'll be working later. And um, uh, the class will run so that it's um, daytime in the U.S. And it's, it's already booking up really well. Uh, but there are there are a few places left for that for people to to join in and have a go and be real pioneers for us in um, taking an, an online class um, as something that's really um, vibrant and fun. Well, Susan, thank you for that. That was an excellent transition because that's what I really wanted to get to is in all of this uh, across the world, around the world, I'm seeing there, there's a, a tremendous positive upside to this virus situation. I mean, of course, the, the, there's nothing good about the virus. Everyone would agree with that. But in terms of, of conducting business, there, I think, is a tremendous upside that is going to pay off long term. And you just described that in that uh, you're prompted really to set up an online course that is now opening doors that you've not had before. And, and I think that's, that's exciting in that uh, other people can participate with the Royal School and benefit from the instruction who really couldn't do it before because they couldn't get to England. That is absolutely the case. And you know, we've had many, many people who have, not just from America, but from all over the world, who tell us, oh, we can never get um, to you, whether it's at Hampton Court or even when we have been doing our summer school in the States. So this, this will be a way to um, have that, a bit of that RSN experience. We know it's never going to be quite the same as having a whole group of people together, but... Um, Certainly in the short term and medium term, I think it's going to be a, a great way for people to be able to continue engaging with hand embroidery 
uh, and having that tuition and sharing with other people. I think the, the class aspect will be that you think, yes, you know, you're not alone in this. And there are other people having a go as well. I just think that's flat out exciting because that it just expands your capabilities and your reach and, and then gives people access to something that uh, so many people want, want, which is to, to experience the Royal School Education Program. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think there's a real plus going to come out of this in that regard, in that, in that one aspect. Um, uh, I think there's some real plus. And I was reading a, an article this morning about uh, how some major corporations are starting to realize already that people working at home is not so bad. And then the downside to that is that uh, there's an expectation, particularly in New York City, where there's going to be a lot of empty office space because they're going to decide they don't need it. And uh, because they're discovering that, that people can work at home, they can do online, the technology allows us to conduct these kinds of educational programs and do it effectively. And, uh, and, and the more of it that we do, the, the better we're all going to get at it, and we just simply adapt. So I, I think there's a real plus there for you guys, yes. Yeah, and we're certainly going to try and make the most of it. <laughs> yeah, and part of that is you simply don't have a choice. So. <laughs> That is very true. That is very true. I mean, at, at one end, we, we're, we are offering at the moment um, online tuition to individuals, whether it's to finish a, a UFO, whether it's to start a new project they've always wanted to. Um, but ultimately, um, purely doing it one to one isn't isn't economically viable. Uh, and so that's why we want to move back to being able to offer classes um, for uh, both short courses and for our certificate and diploma. And Kelly, it sounds like from what Susan's saying that you guys are already, uh, you know, technology issues aside, are already then now starting to look at what else can we offer? How can we advance this? Uh, absolutely, Gary. And chatting with my first years today, normally I have tutorials with them twice a term. And since Susan will agree, space is at a premium for the RSN at Hampton Court Palace. <laughs> and so rooms have to multitask um, at the same time sometimes. So uh, it's, it is quite difficult to get a whole room to yourself and one other student. So I, I've, I've basically said to them, look, I think this this one-to-one -one tutorial is working very well on Zoom, thank you very much. So going forward, I think I'm just going to keep that as a distance thing because it's a lot easier to meet with them without interruptions or background noises. And looking forward, thinking, what are some of the things that we're having to do at the moment that actually are quite good if we keep them that way going forward? By the time we gradually phase by phase by phase, get back to what we what we think we had, it will look so different mm -hmm. that um, it, it's never going to be the way it was. And all the good things that are coming out of the current situation, we're going to keep and we're going to have our cake and eat it too. I'm very excited about the whole online thing. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, and I would agree with you. I think exactly that. There's, there's a, a, a whole new world of opportunity Mm. It, it, with with just that very approach. Let's find mm -hmm. the good things. Let's exploit them and really get the most out of them. What are your teachers, your tutors experiencing? Are they, have they, what feedback have you had from them? Well, we have quite a few of them who are furloughed. Um, in, in the UK, when you're furloughed, they're getting partially paid and, and they're not allowed to do any work, but they are allowed to train. So we've been saying to them, um, have a go, have a look what other people are doing online and what we can learn from that so that when we're ready to, to take you all back on again um you're um already has some training to be able to move forward uh, and then we'll get them together online but uh, to be able to take some training so we can pass on all that we've been learning in, in the first few months um so that they are then geared up so even those who are a bit sort of slightly terrified of the technology <laughs> will actually then feel more comfortable but, well let's face it we, you know, we've all had that moment when we think oh my goodness what am i doing with this and how do i move forward uh, and then you know not five minutes later you think oh this is easy i can do this again you know um so we want we want to get them to that phase uh, and it will be quicker 
than 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 is normal. But um, that's that is the way forward for all of them, um, so that they can continue to be making a living and doing what they enjoy most, which is the, the teaching. Uh, so yeah, that's our, that's our aim um, over the summer to be able to get all of them up to speed, so that come the autumn, you know, we're looking at. at um, more classes online so we're less worried about if we can't have the class in the classroom mm -hmm. and that will also again mean more people can engage regardless of where they live so um, that's a good thing you guys have uh, clearly then are taking this on as a forward-looking situation where you can see new new areas for but the royal school then uh, of course you guys have you know it's been my impression that, that with your satellite efforts and your online efforts that you guys have been really on that path anyway uh, in the past couple of years of of expanding your outreach and making more things available online and and to to people all over the world so it really is not that much of a stretch for you in this situation to to keep that line of thinking and just advance it well that's very nice of you to say that i have to say when it got to the 20th of March, it felt like it was one heck of a stretch to suddenly go <laughs> from. <laughs> you know, it really, it really was. We just have to do this. Um, there, were, there were no choices. You know, it was, it was absolutely sink or swim. And um, you know, because we literally went from having a solid base of income that we could rely on and that we built over the last 10 or so years to having nothing. You know, our, our degree still had to continue because that was scheduled through to the to June. And same with the future tutors, but all our short courses and certificate and diploma just had to stop immediately. And you think, well, that, that can't continue. And, and so it's, it's necessity that has driven us um, to bite the bullet but you are right that we have been putting in place uh, a bit more IT over the last two to three years and that has really stood us in good stead you know have we not made some lots of internal changes with our, our IT we would have been in one heck of a different position but um, with all of that in place um, it has made it that little bit easier to uh, to drive this forward um, but, but as I say all of those of our tutors who are not furloughed for whatever reasons, um, they've all been keen to give it a go and to, to work with it and see what we can learn from it so that we can build a future for the RSN. Because um, uh, you may not know, Gary, but in, in 2022, we will be 150. Oh, my. And I am darn well, yeah, I'm darn well convinced we are going to still be here to be 150 and, <laughs> absolutely and, um so yeah our focus for the last little bit has all been preparing everything for the 150th and that suddenly had to go on pause just to make sure that we are still here for the 150th <laughs> yeah yeah that's kind of a critical element isn't it <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah well yeah. see and, and that speaks well to your uh, your corporate culture that uh, your your people are all willing to say, all right, let's dig in here and figure out how we can make the most of that. That uh, that's really uh, a little peek into the in inner workings that is is uplifting, I guess. In that your your culture, the culture you have within the staff is, yeah, let's move this forward. Let's work together. That's that's very good. So bravo to that. Being positive in what is, you know, around us, it's such a negative, horrible time, but that we can be positive. And that the other thing that we bring is that inner knowledge that embroidery, hand embroidery particularly, is therapeutic in the best sense of the words. And we've known that for decades. Um, our predecessors did work with returning soldiers and sailors from the First World War um, because of the therapeutic aspect of stitch. So for us, keeping Stitch going uh, is not just part of our charitable purpose, or our non-profit purpose, but also it's it's fundamental to helping people. Uh, and so that's why we've been so actively promoting initiatives of things to do to stitch different projects uh, and just ha have a go at Stitch. And we've been really thrilled by the messages we get back from people. Uh, we had one in just today from a lady who said she'd got back to stitching, having 
not stitched for many years. Um, but when she had first started stitching, she'd taken uh, courses from someone who used to be at the Royal School. And she, she, she was doing long and short and she could still, in her mind's ear, could still hear <laughs> Miss Nan explaining how to do long <laughs> and short. And, and it's just that continuity and that link that makes us so special and that we want, you know, we must continue for that. Yes. Oh, that's great. That's great to hear from people like that. Yeah. Talk about the infrastructure. You said that you had been building up your technology. Now are you going to need to increase more in terms of of your uh, just simple computing power and IT people? Uh, and then talk about the, the palace itself. How how are you seeing that changing? Are you seeing uh, hoping for a return to life as it was? Or are you expecting some adjustments there? It's very interesting thinking about what's going to happen at um, at the palace. I mean, the, the longest I have ever known the palace be closed before is one day, and that's Christmas Day. Um, so for it to have been closed for such a long time it is um, unheard of. Uh, and they are going to have to think through how they deal with people and how they how with the social distancing, they've got lots of space, but there are also lots of pinch points where people have to pass each other. So how that's going to work, they're going to have to really think about. In terms of our students, generally our students come in uh, before the main visitors um, and they often, at different times of the year, leave after them. So that's actually helpful because it separates them out. But we're having to look at how we set up classrooms and make it so that we can operate and have uh, the requisite amount of space. Um, our government just published a document two days ago on how what we have to put in place. Um, and we're looking at that and thinking about how, how we can make it work um, for our different types of students for the one-day students, but also for the, the degree students and the future tutors who come for you know, full terms. So that will require quite a lot of thinking about, but probably for implementation for September uh, for, the, for the, the main courses. And then over the summer, we can reutilize our largest rooms and we can have six people in each for a class. And that will be fine because there's plenty of space um, to keep the people uh, apart. So we are going to be uh, running classes, hopefully, from um, July uh, back in the palace. Um, but then our, our staff team, we may well continue with a number of them working from home all the time. So we reduce the number of people who are in at any one time. Yeah just to kind of key down um, contact and transmission and so on. So two developments there. But the one person whose job is absolutely safe is our IT manager because, <laughs> um, you know, he is helping, he is helping keeping us all going here. <laughs> and um, in the, he's been with us now, where are we now, about 15 to 18 months, something like that. And um, so... We'd done some, quite a lot of development work prior to him coming, but we knew we needed someone who could help to sort it all out. You know, all those things, the gremlins that, that you get from a new system. Right. Um, so he's been doing a lot of that work. Uh, but really, you know, when we had to convert in, in, in de just days into our new way of working, he was there setting up teams for us, setting up Zoom, um, helping us sort out various clusters and groups that could work together um so that was fantastic and so yes we will need to look at how we develop um so that we can be even more um it capable um, right. for the next phase as, as they might say right well yeah there, there's uh, ultimate job security but then incredible pressure yeah <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> the other aspect of the palace is your archives and your exhibits and your shop and I, I got to believe that that uh, tourist traffic and uh, just on day to day business is a big part of your revenue. So uh, how are you addressing that, particularly exhibits and your archives and people who want to come in and do research? 
that uh, that's another aspect of it that uh, I'm sure has been affected dramatically. Yes, indeed. And in fact, changing over uh, our exit palace at the moment, we, I should have been changing it to one which is called Stitches International. Uh, and that features work from many different countries of the world that have a strong stitch culture. Um, well, that has not managed to, to happen at this point. And um, although we might put up the exhibition, um, we don't actually have anyone um, who can come and see it because the space that we use for the exhibition is also the space for our studio. And with the new requirements, we're not going to be able to have two groups of people in there at the same time. So what we're doing is I've already done a little little video which you can find through the RSN. It's on YouTube um, through the RSN, and it features some of the pieces from um, China. So Chinese historical embroidery, um, pieces that would go into that exhibition. And then I've got another one coming out very shortly, which will feature pieces from different parts of the world, including um, South America and India um, and Turkey. Um, so we're feeding through little videos of some of the pieces that we've got so that people can see uh, what would have been the exhibition. Um, and then I'm probably going to do um, online conducted tours and even probably um, a, a little Instagram live session. I'm going to do an Instagram live session week of the 25th of May and questions about the RSN and its history as a whole. And I will answer them live. And then probably we'll follow that with ones linked to the exhibitions and um, so people can get you know have an interactive session uh, and follow things up so that will be the way that we're going to do the exhibitions that were planned um, in the short term because the the probably the next couple will be ones that are from the the uh, collection so we will so stitches international will be coming in one format or another and um, the exhibition that remains up at the moment was figures and faces in embroidery uh, and i'll probably do a um, a guided tour around that about that online uh, as well mm -hmm. so that people will be able to to access them and um, find a way but our shop has continued throughout uh, and has been extremely popular i'm pleased to say so our shop is still available for online orders and purchases. Um, and in fact, we had one person going in and packing. And every time I would ring her, I'd ring her about once a week to catch up and see how things were. I could tell it sounded emptier and emptier and emptier. <laughs> and, and so she has now she has now finished because um, she was packing, not, uh, not, not a real sort of shop person. Um, and now the, the shop manager has now gone in because she needs to reorder things uh, because, you know, the cupboard was bare. Uh, but um, we have new stock coming in now and new kits and things. So um, that going um, is really important. And again, to, to meet the needs of, of, of stitchers who want to be doing something when they can't do all their normal activities. Yeah, yeah. If, if there's if there's a positive to any of this, it's the. I would say dramatic increase in stitching activity that that we've seen all around the world. It's um, it's been incredible, and I, I know some a lot of shops are impatiently waiting for orders to come in because they need threads and ground cloth because the demand from their customers is so high. So it's been a mm -hmm. a real shot in the arm for uh, for the hobby and the, and the industry in that. Uh, People are saying, "All right, finally, I can I can have an afternoon where I can stitch," and uh, that's so that's a real plus. I'm glad to hear that the that the cupboards got bare. That's great. We're working with a, a company in London who uh, they they're very much a um, a community space. It's very much about being there and experiencing the space. Well, of course, they can't do that right now. So they're taking a lot of what they would ordinarily offer to people um, from, from a physical location to online lessons. And uh, we ended up getting involved with them and are uh, delivering a four-week series uh, every Friday um, starts in... Uh, a couple of weeks time and uh, we, we already have pre-recorded material uh, that we can share with them but then I was asked to 
put together uh, some material to do a, a, a live demonstration followed by a Q&A, and then a week after that to do a live lesson um, for two hours. Uh, I'm not actually organizing the the student group. This is happening with, with um, this other organization, uh, but they have already decided that for the period of lockdown, they're not charging anything for the uh, the workshops that they're going to be running. So ordinarily, you'd have to pay uh, to attend these um, physically, but they're very active in uh, helping people with mental health issues in the community. So what they've said is that all of their workshops are free of charge, but they are encouraging people to find out about the uh, charity that they support and to donate to it. So that's been interesting because all of that um, conversation and negotiation has happened online. Um, I believe our marketing team were in conversation with them some time ago, but I got brought in about a week ago and I have only met them online on, uh, on a Zoom video call and uh, have learned just what my Mac is is capable of when it comes to pre-recorded <laughs> videos and uh, importing virtual backgrounds so you're not seeing the mess of the room behind me, but you're actually seeing something that looks rather nice. Um, and, and so that's that. That's quite nice to be able to, to, to take that forward to people who uh, would ordinarily not even consider coming to the RSN. Um, I would like to say something to the... Um, the comment that you made earlier about uh, expanding into satellites and to online, uh, I, I kind of have a vested interest in this because I I set up the Bristol satellite uh, because when I when I graduated I was uh, at that time based in Bristol, which is a city about two hours two and a half hours drive west of London, and it's been very popular because people know that they will receive the same standard of tuition and the same experience regardless of the geographical location and i think this is something that uh susan touched on and i think it's it's really important to remind people that we're trained to teach in the same way and uh that's that's our uh, the way we approach it personally and philosophically but also technically so I can teach you how to do long and short, and it'll be the same way that somebody was taught 30, 40, 50 years ago, and it's the same way that people who graduated from the Future Tutor Program are now teaching their students. And we have students uh, who will undertake their certificate and diploma at different satellites. So they'll maybe do one technique in Bristol and another one in Durham, uh, then do another one in Glasgow. So these are all uh, outposts of, of the RSN, but no matter who they go to, they will get the same standard of tuition and the same personal attention and the same experience, even if they're not at Hampton Court Palace, which let's face it, is, is a beautiful place. But it's in the center of London almost, and it's hot, it's expensive to stay in the neighborhood, and it's it's a flight apart from people who live in the UK. And I think this is the exciting thing for me is to see that people who uh, are passionate about Stitch and maybe don't have the uh, confidence or, or feel that somehow they have to already be a good stitcher before they come to the RSN, uh, they can see how down to earth we all are and, and how it doesn't matter if you've never picked up a needle before. Uh, as long as you know the pointy end and, the, and with a hole in it, then we're good to go. <laughs> um, and it is just really, really exciting to, to be able to see the traditions carry on and and we all share the, the, this this training that is very niche and uh, and uh, the, the group of, of master embroiderers that come out the other end of this uh, qualification uh, can, can sit in for one another, can substitute teach for one another. And as a student, you would not have 
the the tuition it would not feel any different it's mm. simply the 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 voice and the personality of the teacher in front of you but it's it's still of an incredibly high standard now uh, we've made it clear that you guys are, are i i would suggest on on the precipice of of a real expansion of mm. online activity Hel- help the listener understand how they can take advantage of that what kinds of things are coming up how do they stay informed about uh, opportunities so that they can participate in the Royal School experience uh, from their homes or uh, anywhere in the world? Help us. Where do we go? How do we do it? What do we, what do we uh, get? I think the most important thing and the easiest thing to do is to subscribe to the newsletter, uh, which is one of the great inventions of the modern world, our e-newsletters with beautiful images, wonderful things that, that end up, you know, once a week or once a month or whatever in your inbox. And you click on it and you see all this amazing information and it has links to sign up to things. It tells you where to find us on Facebook and Instagram and uh, and other social media platforms. We have a really, really wonderful marketing team who share everything as soon as they can. And I think uh, the information is all out there. So go to the website, have a look, click on all the links, look at all the classes that are, are running. It's as up to date as 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 today. And and I think probably the most important thing is to uh, not be afraid to, to join in because uh, everybody has to start with a stitch and we were all like that at one point and I think that uh, certainly there's so many uh, opportunities that are coming up certainly more than even I'm aware of Susan could tell you far more than I could about specifics but it's all on the website and it's all in the newsletter so people just need to subscribe and then Mm -hmm. stay on top of it yep Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, now do we look in the fall uh, probably not sure if you can have in-person classes in the fall yet. Uh, are, are we g- going to have a, a schedule of classes coming out soon that people can sign up for? Yes, we are. They're not, they're not out just yet because we're still working on them at the moment. Um, and certainly starting with looking at transferring a number of our physical classes to be online. So we'll start with those, but then there'll probably be some um, additional ones and um, so ones that, that um, people listening to this podcast, if, if they're interested, but they're not based in the UK uh, and they see other ones, then just contact us and say, that sounds really, really great. And if we get enough engagement from people, then we will put it on on a different time scale so that people in America, for example, can, can do it um, in your working day. So. Um, yeah, th- this this does give us more opportunity to to meet that kind of of demand. Certainly, that's the thing that uh, just in in talking with people doing shows and just talking with people who have had experience with the Royal School, is you guys are not a bunch of rigid people who won't budge off of of the planned schedule. Uh, <laughs> uh, if, if people ask, and, and like you said, if there's enough demand. You, you will put things together so that people can take advantage of the experience. Yes, absolutely, we will. The exhibits now, it, we're going to have more online uh, opportunities. Yes, the, the, the exhibitions, we're going to put aspects online. And again, we'll let people know through the e-news. So you can just say, just sign up to that for free on our, our website. Uh, and then information is sent out via that. And then different options to engage with others through things like Instagram Live, uh, that will also be signposted in, in the e-news as well as on Instagram. Um, so there'll be more coming out of that shortly. For, for the two of you personally, what uh, what has all of this done? Has this given you, uh, made you work uh, incredibly long hours just to kind of keep this all going? Or have you had a little time to do some of your own <laughs> stitching? Um, I have to confess, um, I did think that this might mean that I could do some in my spare time now that I would theoretically have more spare time. Um, <laughs> this is nonsense. Um, and I've not managed to, I have not managed to pick up a needle and thread um, for one small item. But um, no, uh, my, my particular interest is our archive and our collection. 
Um, so I have been trying to spend a little bit of time looking at that. Um, so I have been looking at um, the photographs in our in our archive um, and finding out a little bit more about those. Um, but um, really, uh, not in not enough time to do that and to stitch as well. <laughs> I'm not surprised at that answer, really, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, same for you? Well, I, uh, I, I think I'm dividing my time at the moment between uh, doing the stuff that, that I would be doing if I were at Hampton Court Palace, and, you know, a lot of that's paperwork, and a lot of that is... Uh, talking to the tutors and to the students, but I'm spending a lot more time learning uh, and getting very excited and trying all these different uh, um, platforms. I thought I was uh, fairly fairly IT literate, and, and, and I am, but social media and and all of these these ways of sharing and 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 just the whole uh, package deal of of online teaching which is a skill in itself um yes. is is just it's it's absorbing me i feel like i've gone back to school i feel like i'm in summer school uh <laughs> and 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 just having to cram uh, so much information and and try things and and google things and so so if i'm not if i'm not doing the usual job then um, I'm stitching prototypes for some of these these online things that we're, we're getting into and and doing a lot of reading of stuff on the screen and having a go at, uh, at, at, at different things and being very, very excited. Isn't that true that uh, the whole social media thing, but then you need to, to learn what's available and whether it will alert, mm -hmm. it, it work and, and you have to do it quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. because the pressure is on there's a need immediate needs and i yeah i know i know that feeling yep i mm -hmm. i, I got to figure this out and i got to do it soon because we got to have a solution tomorrow and mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> it is building that plane in the air <laughs> yes literally that is really a <laughs> tremendous analogy it really is yep well ladies thank you so much this has uh, been a fun conversation and uh looking forward to what you guys put together sounds like you're gonna <laughs> you're going to be going 100 miles an hour for the next few months. We'll be conquering the world one stitch at a time. That's it. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much. Thanks to Sassy Jacks for sponsoring. And, folks, uh, get on that newsletter list and follow the Royal School on Instagram and, and their website to keep up with what's coming up. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>